Welcome back Arcadians, Alex here with another video. How you all doing guys? And this week we've got another game room tour. This time we're going down to Somerset to see the Time Warp Arcade in Bridgewater. And it's run by a lovely guy called Stuart. I've never been to this arcade before, so I don't know what to expect. It's been established for quite a few years, so I'd be quite interested to see what cabs he's got. Also, he's got a few retro game shops as well, so if we've got time, we can go and have a look around at his shop as well. So. Without further ado, guys, let's get on the road and go and see the Time Warp Arcade. Land Revenue. The check's in the post. <laughs> Hi, mate. How All right, doing, Alex, how are you? Let's shake your hand with that one. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. How are you? This is awesome. I've been so excited to come down here. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Yeah, no, been, been looking forward to meeting you. So. Yeah. It's been a while. Brilliant. We're not actually open today, are we? No, no, no. This is a private session just for yourself. Excellent. So. I feel very so, uh, privileged. Come on in. Help wow, yourself. look at this. We've got a bar straight away. No beer, just cans of Coke, soft drinks. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, no beer yet. So. Yeah. So how long have you been here, Stuart? You've been here um, a while. We opened eight years ago. Um, eight, eight years, years in ago. May 2014. Wow, and so. you've gone through a lot of crises, really, We've with had, the COVID and Yeah, yeah, a lot of else. things. Um, bad builders at the start. We had Everything kind of went wrong from the beginning, but we, we kind of clung on and we're still here. So. Wow, that's brilliant. It was so great to see a, a living arcade totally devoted to sort of the retro yeah, arcade yeah. scene. Yeah. Um, and obviously you've probably got a bit of modern stuff in here as well. A couple, but it's yeah. mostly 80s and 90s. There's a few early 2000s, but yeah, yeah the newest thing is the PlayStation 4 for the kids. So that's it, it. Yeah, okay. And you're open, what, Friday and Saturday night? Friday, Saturday and uh, Friday night, Saturday and Sunday daytimes. Okay, brilliant. So do you want to show me in? Where, where are we going to start? Please do. Wherever you want, really. So yeah. we've been sat down the, the classic aisle. Um, <laughs> Obviously, games consoles, yeah, we, that's more for the kids. Wow. Yeah. When, when we opened, it was going to be an adult only venue, um, and it very quickly became apparent that we needed to be a family venue. So we had so to you kind get of. People coming in here, chilling out, they've had a cup of drinks, they've played some games, they can just yeah. come sit down come here. Come sit down, and yeah. Chat, or, which is really nice to have, yeah. isn't it? More often, it's the dads will go and play Golden Axe or something, and the kids are just coming here and play FIFA, because oh, that's, <laughs> that's what the kids want to play half the time. Yeah. So uh, they're, they're, not, they're not interested in Gallagher yeah. and stuff. So. No, it's great you've got that, a nice relaxing area. Yeah. I like the colour scheme in here. It's sort of a cross between Nintendo Red and Sega Blue. Yeah, well, someone did say actually it was Sonic the Hedgehog Blue to me recently, and yeah, that, that's obviously yeah. the reason. <laughs> uh, it, oh, so we've got like a, an old fashioned uh, football table here. Yeah. I remember yeah. these back in the day? Yeah, I, I wasn't going to get it. Somebody offered it to me cheap when we opened, and it's probably one of the most popular machines in here. It's always Is in it? use. Yeah, all ages, all, you know, mums, dads, kids. Yeah. So absolutely popular. It looks like an original one, like an old, like a proper old fashioned one, because they do modern ones of this, don't they? Yeah, I don't know how old it is. It's an old one where you have to slide the coins in. It was set to old, old coinage when I got it, so yeah. it's, it's reasonably old, I think. Yeah. So, cool, so. look. Oh my God, you've got an original Star Wars cockpit. Sadly, broken at the moment. It's, it? it spends more time broken than working. That's, that's what I was warned before I bought it anyway. It's a colour vector. Um, and it's the vector that's gone down on it. So I have got a, a tech guy that's actually looking at it right now for me. So. I was going to ask you about that. So you've got a tech guy fully employed here. You must have. No, um, all, it's, all it is is myself and uh, a friend of mine who come in like one evening a week. Um, myself and Luke, and then a recently uh, a freelance guy's offered his services, and he comes down every few weeks, picks up a few bits, takes them off. Um, so yeah, so I've got two tech guys, but they are just part time. Right. So okay. It's, um, yeah, we don't get a lot of time. Most of our no. time is spent fixing, which is why some of the machines look a little bit rough around the yeah, edges. Yeah, joysticks, monitors, PCBs. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a constant yeah. upkeep. I mean, I've got eleven cabs, and I know yeah. how hard that is. But <laughs> how many cabs have we actually got in here? Running at the moment about 65, 65 62, 65, wow. somewhere around that mark. Wow. So let's have a look at this Star Wars cockpit. Yeah, it's 
Wow, where did this one come from, um, then, Stuart? I found it on eBay just yeah. before I opened it. It was the end of 2013, yeah. and it popped up on eBay for 1800 And at the time, that sounded like the OK price. Obviously, yeah. it shot up now. And I just bought it straight away without even knowing how to get it. Wow. And I sent a courier to go and pick it up, and his van wasn't big enough, so he wrenched the roof off the cockpit and chucked <laughs> in the back of the van. It got wedged in behind the um, the wheel arches. It was it was yeah, it was not good. Unbelievable. But, uh, so that was 2013. That was 2013. Yeah, because I started wow. planning this year just before the curb, the hobby started to yeah. sort of get big and prices started to go through yeah, the roof. Yeah, I mean, I was yeah. picking up machines for next to nothing because that's yeah. what they were selling for. Yeah, you know, a Golden Axe full cab was 100 quid. Wow. I was picking up Naomi's for sort of you know 200, 250 with a game in them. Yeah. Um, well, working one of these now, I've seen go for about four thousand pounds, yeah, maybe yeah. even more. You know. Yeah, that's what I. And is that iconic? Star Wars cab that everyone remembers, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. And Straight this is, after the movie, you go down the yeah, arcades, get yeah. into this. This is some of my earliest. Your scene from Star Wars. It's, it's 100%. It? It's one of my earliest arcade memories, just playing yeah. this out and yeah. about. Um, and it was, this was my Grail cab. So when this popped up just before I opened, yeah. it was a no brainer. Can you get mods for this to play the other games? I all, believe you know? can. There's upgrade kits. I think there's, um, there's you know, other mods that we've made, you know, aftermarket yeah. ones and that. But I've tried to keep this as, as original, as original as possible. possible. So it's original boards, original yeah. monitors. So I imagine this is quite popular in here, isn't it? It is when it works, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and here, this looks to me like a street Gallagher, is that right? I, I'm going to agree with you, I have no idea. You've um, got no idea. <laughs> uh, it was just it, offered to me a few years a, back and I, really? I just picked it up, yeah. This is a beautiful cabaret version of Gallagher, which is what we saw a lot of over here in the UK. And I'm pretty damn certain that is a street Gallagher, um, which was a company that used to bang these out back in the day. I love it. I love that screen. What is that, a 13-inch screen? Uh, possibly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at, look <laughs> I, at, I, I'm more of a, a user than, than, a, than an expert. I, oh, I play them, I collect them, but... I love it. My love tech it. guy would know all the details. But, uh... That is beautiful. It is one of my favourite cabs in here, definitely. Cab. I love that. It's the right size for kids as well, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Probably a little bit too small for me now, me being so tall, but back in the day, that would be a perfect size for kids, yeah. wouldn't I, it? I have to fight not to take that home myself. Yeah, so no, it's, it's definitely one of my favourites. <laughs> and here we've got, looks like an electric coin um, play scene, is it? Is that right? Uh, yeah, play scene yeah, on that yeah, one, play scene right. special, yes. So it looks like the MVS cab, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Is it set up to play MVS games? Um, it's just Jammer at the moment. Just Jammer, so, so okay. It's just a, a standard Jammer. So it's jammer. got the layout here, like an MVS cab, a Neo Geo MVS cab. It's Lord's Vale, um, which is the name actually for the Neo Geo one, which I've got. But I think that's an electric coin version, isn't it? I'm pretty sure it is. I may be wrong. Maybe that is a Lord's Vale. I don't so, know. You don't know either. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not the tech guy. I could be wrong. I just, I just collect them because I like I them. I think that's an electric <laughs> coin, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's the Lord's Well. And then we've got, well, what is this? This is a mishmash, a uh, hybrid Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man cab. Yeah. Is that right? It, it was a cab I picked up quite early on. Um, somebody just offered it to me and it was like, yeah, I'll pick it up. And it, it wasn't quite what I wanted, but... Well, I mean, this is a proper seaside... It's weirdo. It's, it's well, it's well, but I mean, it was covered in horrible stickers when I got it, and I, it? I peeled most of them off. And yeah, it was an absolute mess. But it works. There's a, a 60 in one in it. Yeah. It's, um, yeah I love people... the little Mr. Doom character down yeah. here. <laughs> I left him on, but all the others were. It was, it was quite horrible. Oh, it's just screams. This just screams 80s sort of English seaside cabinet. You could probably even smell the seaside. Salt quite, on quite there, possibly. There's probably still sand inside it. So. And then we've got an electric coin MIDI, which is what I've got at home. Is this just running Jammer as well? Um, this is, again, these, these three are all multi-game boards. All just, multi-game just for, boards, yeah. Just to, to allow people to have a bit more choice. Yeah, they were I some of my earliest these. machines. You need to get a light fix in there, dude. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. do, saying that. It's, um, <laughs> this one looks like it's got an LCD in it, hasn't it? Yeah, again, it's how it came yeah. to me. Um, these are some of the earliest machines I had, so yeah. Yeah, for personal use, I didn't really mind. Yeah, and this is another one here, another Jammer cab. Yeah. So you, did you just pick all these up sort of on eBay over the last? There's, yeah, a, a lot of the early ones were eBay. Um, yeah. Quite quite often people knew I was into arcades anyway. So I have people coming to me because we, we also run some computer game shops and some people come to me and say, oh, I've got an arcade machine for sale. Do you want to buy it? you a computer and game shop? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, so we've got, got 
other games? Um, basically, yeah, we've got three game shops oh, uh, awesome. called Insane Games, quick plug. Locally? Um, locally, yeah, oh, they're all right. locally. One they're is actually in Bridgewater. They're open today? Oh, yeah, they're open oh, today, awesome. yeah. There's one around the corner, you can oh, have a look at. Oh, we're going to go there then. We can well, do, definitely. yeah, yeah. I can you know, take you around there, see if we can say something. More so. jammer cabs? Yeah, just more random jammers again. See, this, I think, is another electric coin cab. It's got Lord's Vale on it, isn't it? No, it looks like an electric coin. Typical sort of um, jammer cabs that you'd find in the seaside or fairground. Yeah. And then we've got a Blasteroids. Yeah, Where was, did you find this one? That was know? actually for sale at Play Leisure in Dunkerswell. Oh, okay. Um, it's, a, it's a machine I've always wanted. I used to see it in the arcades when I was a kid, but it was always 30p a go and I could never afford that. Yeah. So um, when I saw this pop up last year, it was it was on my wanted list. So I this is the sequel to Asteroids, isn't it's it? It's technically the fourth sequel, the yes. Fourth or the, sequel, or the, or the fourth one in the series. Yeah, I think it's the third sequel, the fourth game in the series. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Do you know, I've never really put enough time into it. I've seen it in the no. arcade club. It's really hard. Other places. It's, it's hard. Isn't it's it? frustratingly hard. Yeah. Is it? I haven't got past the first set of levels yet. <laughs> Oh, so. look, we've got a dig dug. He's out of order. Sadly, yeah. Oh, no. Ram chips keep blowing in it. Every time we replace them, so they seem to the go again. So this is the Euro dig dug, which my friend Victor Marlin used to own. Oh, right. Excellent. Yeah, I don't know if he's still got it, but it's one of his favourite games. Yeah. Lovely little cab, lovely artwork. It's a cool little game as well. Very similar to sort of Mr. Do, isn't it? Yes, yeah. Pengu. Now, that is a very extreme, uh, extremely rare cab. Don't oh, right. see many of them around at no. all. Yeah, where did you find this one? Um, well, the Pengo, the Commando, and the Dig Dug, uh, yeah. all here in the corner, came from the chaps that used to own Arcade Bar. Ah, which so was I, the... know, I know you used to own this then. This yeah, was you... Aaron. Yeah, it was indeed. It was Aaron's, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, Aaron's, uh... yeah, because he was the only person in the country that had one at the time. Oh, excellent, yeah. No. So I did think straight away, Aaron. Yeah, he had these in his garage, and it was like, oh, I want to get rid of them. And I'm yeah. quite friendly with Aaron and some of the guys that used to do Arcade yeah, Bar. Yeah, so, so you used to go to um, the Arcade Bar, I, did I you? didn't, no. I I moved to Exeter in about 2010, even though I, live, I used to work in, and live in Bridgewater. Yeah. And when I moved there, a friend of mine said, oh, no way, you're so close to Arcade Barn. And I was like, what's Arcade Barn? Yeah. Um, and I would already wanted to set up an arcade. And when I looked online and found out what Arcade Barn was, and it was like a single entry fee, it was like, oh, that's so obvious. Yes. Why didn't I think of that yeah. before? And that's how this it's became nice. right, a reality. Okay. So. See, I, that's when I first got into the hobby, going down to the Arcade Barn. Yeah. So I met Sean and Aaron and all yes, those yeah. guys. I saw advertising Retro Gamer. Right, yeah. And they had a little, little open day. So I've got to go down. These are my type of people, you know. It yeah, was the first yeah, time definitely. I met Muddy Music, Ollie. Yes, yeah. Uh, and a few of the other guys, you yeah, know. Yeah. Well, uh, TB2000, Tony, he's the one yeah. that does most of my monitor repairs yeah, it was for just me. A great, it was a great so. little place. And yeah. the community was quite small then. Exactly, you know, it just wasn't a big thing. And, no. um, unfortunately, work commitments and I couldn't visit it when it was open. Yeah. And, then, and then sadly, they closed down. Yeah, so um, I had a Fast Freddy out of the arcade bar. Oh, nice. Do you remember that? That was owned by Sean. I don't know. Very, very I'm rare, aware of it, but I've never seen it or played Freddy. it. So yeah. Great music, terrible game. <laughs> <laughs> but I had a soft spot for it. And this is beautiful, mate. This is all original. It's, it's all original, yeah, wow. inside and out. So that is cool. Classic, iconic. 80s arcade game. It's a massive cab, isn't it? They are big cabs, yeah. Yeah, massive cab. That's awesome. And then we've got, what is this, a Nomi D DX Universal Cabinet? Yeah, yeah. Ignore the screen, that is only temporary. Um, is it? The big CRT blue. And what uh, have you I got running in there? It's um, Project Justice, Rival Schools 2. Okay. Did that come I out think. of the console? Um, it was a Dreamcast game, Dreamcast, I think. Dreamcast, yeah, console, Dreamcast, yeah. So is yeah, that sort console. of Dreamcast hardware? It is the same hardware, yeah. Yes, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I bet that's popular, isn't it? Always it is a popular one, yeah. Quite yeah, popular. yeah. And then behind you've got another, we've got a lovely little electric, is that an electric coin? It looks like an electric coin. It's had new T-moulding. It's, it's been completely rebuilt. That looks that like one, a yeah. Vertvik uh, control well, panel. <laughs> funny story behind that, I bought this off of a guy on eBay in Gloucester, um, right. Gloucestershire, and he actually, when I bought it, he actually drove it down and hand delivered it and everything. It was a really nice chap. Yeah. And then a couple of years ago, when Vertvik came down here, yeah. he turned around and says, hang on a minute, that's this good. looks familiar. He says, I'm sure this used to be mine. I sold this to a guy in Gloucestershire. And it's like, I bought it from a guy in Gloucestershire. That is so, unbelievable. Yeah. I recognise that's Vertvik's handiwork. <laughs> I recognise because that's a sort of control panel you used yeah. to like, that kind of black kind of, I don't know what you call yeah. it. It looks textured, but it's not. Yeah, that's yeah, definitely no, he, he Vertvik cab, that one. He definitely recognised his own work. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. 
It's funny that it's in here. I see, when I go to oh. the arcade club, I see a lot of my old cabs up yeah. there. You know? Oh, excellent. Yeah. So, so. Just What's noticed a screen one? on that Rambo? one. Uh, it's, it's not Rabbitville, ignore that. It's yeah. um, Milli Miglia 2. Oh, okay. I, I MVS have... That's an MVS game, the Agero game, isn't it? Uh, it's, it may be, but this is running on a, an actual PCB. Oh, okay. So um, I have been looking for a Rabbitville, but as yet, I haven't found an yeah. original board to put in it. So. Uh, yeah, you've got a good layout here near Stuart. Nice sort of sort of revolving around the room. Yeah, we try to make sort of it. takes you around, doesn't it? That one, sadly, monitor's just gone down on that, so uh, that's just gone off to Tony. The artwork to Tony. is mad. Oh, ignore the... It's covered top to toe in artwork, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, very nice. Really cool. Look at the control panel, guys. Awesome. It's not a bad game, that. I've had a few of my mates have that in their collection and they kind of get bored of it after a while, but right. it's, it's great for the arcade. Yeah, yeah, just have a couple of games here yeah, and there. Yeah. So. We've got some Royal Star Jammer cabs here. Nice, we've got what's in there, Puzzle Bubble. Yeah. And what's that one in there, um, Art of Fighting? Art of Fighting, I think it's actually a four, a four, uh, four star Neo Geo in this one. So oh, yeah, we've got okay. Last Resort oh, in yeah. this one. Good game. Um, I'm trying to remember what's in this one. Street Hoops, I think, is one of them. Wind jammers. There's straight hoops. I haven't got straight wind jammers yet. Yeah. And then uh, the the football game. Oh, my brain isn't working today. Um, Don't know. I haven't seen that one. It's a football. That's it. Soccer, soccer brawl. Okay. It's, it's football, but you can beat each other up while you're doing yeah. it. So, so we've we missed any out here. What we've got here? We've got a couple of um, silver strike bowling. Yeah, very and popular. Goldacy. Yeah, the yeah. silver strike's very popular. Because they were everywhere. They were in all the pubs. Yeah. And people yeah. just used to play them, didn't they, in all the yeah. pubs. What, what our idea was when we opened is we wanted to get as big a variety as possible, and yes. not just the stuff you see in all the arcades, not just stuff you can play at home, but we wanted things that you didn't see everywhere else. Yeah, because so. everybody's tastes are different in games yeah. as well. Yeah, we wanted, we wanted the crowd pieces. I don't pieces. always like some gun games. Yeah. There's only certain driving games that I like, right. you know, and not all the classic games of that era I no, like no, as this, well, you know, yeah. so you've got to suit everyone. You've got to, yeah, as wide appeal as possible. Yeah. Have a few of the classic, iconic games and then a few obscurities as well, yeah, just to yeah, make you yeah. a bit different than anybody yeah. else. Exactly, yeah. that's, um, that's yeah. what I try to do, some of them. Virtual Cop, huge cabinet, aren't they? Huge cabinet. Area, was that Area? Area 51, 51 yeah. Site 4, the sequel. Yeah, they're always popular, aren't they, the gun games? Gun games always are, yeah. Oh, I've got to have a go on this later. Manx TT, I remember this. I can't remember what year this came out now, do you? Uh, about 95-ish, mid-90s. Yeah, so it's a long way off uh, Super Hang On. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which I actually have ready to go on the floor in about two weeks' time. A Super Hang On? A Super Hang On, yeah. What, the sit-down one? Uh, sadly, I mean the stand-up one. Oh, but, one um, yeah, it's actually hidden in behind some oh, of the okay. machines at the it. moment. I love it. You so. need to get um, Smarties... Mo um, He's done a board, like a multi-board. Oh, so right. you can play Hang On, Super Hang On. Oh, nice. And there's another version of it as well that yeah, he's got on yeah. it. Just to replace the original board if it breaks yeah, down. Yeah, it's yeah. got custom chips on it and stuff like that. So. Lethal Enforcers and Fatal Judgment. Never heard of that one. More shooting games. Lethal Enforcers is a good one. Remember that back in the day. That's late 80s, isn't it? Is that late 80s? I thought it was early 90s. Like no, 92. 92, yeah. 92. yeah, of course it is. It came out on the Super Nintendo. Yes, yeah. That's awesome. But yeah, that is, that's great, isn't it? I'd love to have a, like a full-size driving game in my yeah. arcade. They just take out so much space. Yeah. So. This looks like an old one. Which one's this? Um, that is, again, just a random pickup. Back in the days when machines were cheaper, I've just spotted the monitor, so I need to fix that in a minute. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Overdrive, it's kind of got a bit of a hang-on vibe to it. Yeah. Um, but we, without having the choice of direction, you just follow one route. Right, oh, okay. Um, Again, it was just um, when sort of shortly after opening, it was on right, eBay. Nice Konami can can cab. Cool artwork on the side. Yeah, and then we've got a fighting mania. <laughs> what is that? Very popular you one. Stick your head in there or something. Um, do you? No, the um, the actual pads pop out, and you have to hit the pads when the lights shine up on them. And oh, they 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 flip they out. They actually like flip this. out, and oh, you've got to punch okay. them. It's, it's about speed, not power. Which okay. some people hit it as hard as they can, which doesn't yeah. do much good. But um, yeah, the game's based on the Fist of the, Fist of the North Star anime. Um, okay. So yeah, you're actually playing a story of Fist of the North Star. Yeah, I'm trying to think of another punching game very similar to that. Um, it came out of Super Nintendo as well, I can't remember it now. But it was like a punching pad game, which was pretty cool. And then, well, we've got a weird bunch of cams here, mate. I've never seen before. <laughs> Namco Air Combat. 
Is that like a flight sim? Yeah, yeah, it's air combat. Uh, the same thing that came out on the PlayStation back in the early PlayStation oh, days. Oh, okay. So that's sort of late 90s then, isn't it, that one? Um, no, yeah, I think, think early 90s, yeah. Early 90s, yeah. And the Rolling Extreme, what sort of games is um, that? That one is like a downhill, like a luge game where you're on like a skateboard type thing and you have to go down the hill as so as you can. You can punch the other players while they're going down it. Oh, okay. um, fortunately, the game board's gone a bit iffy. Yeah. Uh, so trying to do you travel them. far for these cabs, like when they pop up? Do you just look on eBay, market, yeah, Facebook I, Marketplace? So if they're local, them? I'll try and get a van and pick them up myself. If they're too far away, then we normally hire yeah. um, Retro Logistics. Um, oh, he's course, usually yeah. pretty good. So, um, cool. You're quite big. I've never seen yeah. one of these in real life. I've all seen them pop up now and again. I've got to have a go on this later. This is yeah, yeah, I'll put the pedal cycle. back on. Yeah, the, the pedal keeps falling off. Namco. Yeah, one of the Namco ones. Yeah. Where did you find that? Uh, again, <laughs> eBay. Um, it is one we, we bought before we opened, and it was down Cornwall Way somewhere. Um, we, funny story, we actually hired a van. A friend of mine hired a van, um, a big, big sort of tail lift one, yeah. um, to go and pick these two up and a load of other machines. We did a bit of a tour of the southwest yeah. picking up machines. And it was when we had the really big um, storms at the uh, sort of end of 93, early, sorry, sorry, end of 2013, yeah. beginning of 14. And the van was kind of rocking like that as we were driving. Oh, was and, uh, yeah, it was, it was quite it looks scary. It really heavy. It looks a little it bit is. like uh, pilot wings. Some yeah. of the levels on pilot wings. Yeah. You just got to pedal as fast as you can and pop all the balloons. And well, I'm going to have a go on that yeah. later because I've never played this before. And what is this? I've never seen this before. A Sega club car. Yeah, another. So it's like a Mario Kart. Uh, no, it's game? a serious uh, go karting game. Right. Oh, that looks awesome. It's a proper kart. You got a proper you kart. You have to sit in, in the there. kart. Yeah, it's um, <laughs> not not brilliant for the really big people. Yeah. What do you mean? What are you saying? I won't. No, 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 oh, no you'll be fine. No, we've, <laughs> uh, we've had a few customers that have got stuck. <laughs> oh really? Oh, that's cool. Then they're huge machines, aren't they? Got another little jammer cab there, Virtual Striker, Golden X, two player, Willow. Is that Willow? Uh, it's not Willow, it's, it's um, Dino Blaster at the moment. I, I forgot to change the, the marquee. Massive cabs you've got in this, Stuart. <laughs> Look at these <laughs> Outrunners, Sega Outrunners, which I don't think I've ever played before. That is cool. I don't think I've ever seen one of these before. Again, it's one I played. Back in my early teens, I think. I remember going on holiday with a friend and, and we played it loads in a local arcade. Yeah. Never as popular as the original, though. Well, people always go back to the original, don't they? Because of the music, the nostalgia, but, you know, it probably is quite a good game, isn't it? Is it is, actually, I really like it, yeah, yeah. yeah. I personally prefer it, just because it Can feels you? a bit more modern, but yeah. I, I'm sure a lot of people are going to hate me for saying that. Yeah. X-Men. These are always popular now. Yeah, yeah. And they're getting more popular because you know, people of that era get into arcades. Yeah. I've seen these going up in price quite a lot. Yes, yeah, definitely. It's massive. <laughs> it's cool. And we got uh, Phil Drive 2. Tell us a bit about this one, Stuart. Um, any, any stories behind this, these? This one is technically on loan. It actually belongs to my tech guy. Oh, he, okay. he found it online somewhere as a non-worker. He bought it out of his own money. He got it working out of his own money and then just let it, let it still stay here for people to use. Um, I pay for the maintenance on it now when it needs anything because we're using so it. So he's storing his cab here he's, as well. He's using it as storage for his cab <laughs> technically, yes. yeah. So yeah, almost all the cabs in here are actually our own, but there's four in total that are on loan. Right. Um, but two of them aren't working, so you wouldn't yeah. see them anyway. So. This one's not working? No, it just blew this morning. Um, the oh, power supply went on it, so oh, um, it yeah, tripped everything. Well, it's turned everything Rave on. Rave Racer, so what type of game is this? It's just another driving game, uh, isn't Yeah, it's just yeah. The, the classic um, 90s yeah. driving game. They certainly made some big games, didn't they? And on this they side, did. I mean, what the hell is this? <laughs> this is massive. <laughs> um, these uh, ones, again, these were bought early on. Uh, they were from Videotronics, uh, Mopatel. Up in Bradford. They're massive, aren't they? Yeah. The Neo Geo MVS system, I've never seen one that big. It's crazy. Yeah, look, when I was setting up, again, machines, because yeah, it was a very different industry then, even yeah. it was only eight, nine years ago, I was just buying whatever I could find. Whatever you could find. Um, and yeah, so I have a real mishmash of stuff in but here. But it works, so, though, doesn't yeah, it? It I, really I, does work. I, I do like the arcade club style where you've got like 20 cabs in a row that all look the same, all the same profile. It looks really nice. Ours is a little bit higgledy piggledy, but. But that's how arcades were back in the day. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I mean, so. I do love the arcade club when you go in there and you've got those electric coin that's clients. Exactly. All, I mean, that's so jealous. It's an incredible sight. It is beautiful. But it just means so. none of us can have any. No, no, exactly. <laughs> he, he's pinching them all, I'm sure he does. He's pinched them so. all. 
but this is how I remember sort of like um, a lot of the arcades back on the seaside and the one in London what was the one in London called now um, in, it was in the Soho, Trocadero the one in, yeah the one in yeah. Soho as well yeah. it was just a total mishmash of cabs yeah. oh right yeah Raven Fighters that's a brilliant game love that game this is an electric coin Xenon yeah. yeah two Xenons and this is a Goliath Goliath yeah yeah which is probably my favourite as well as the Middies I just yeah. love the shape of it. Yeah, yeah. This is what I remember playing. Uh, yeah. A lot of the time, I used to go, sort of Western was my main haunt when I was old yeah. enough to go on my own. And you see a lot of those in there. Yeah. So. I love the shape, I love the design of it. Just an awesome cab. Bloody heavy though, the Goliaths. And these, well, they're just sort of generic sort of fighting cabs, are they really? Yeah, yeah. Again, a couple more that were picked up from Videotronics yeah. back, back in the day. Yeah. And then we've got Sega Nomi with Crazy Taxi. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Classic game. And another jammer cab with some sort of boxing game in there. Yeah, uh, final, I've got two, final round and final something else. I can't oh, remember okay. which one it is. So, uh, I, I'm not, not a fan of the sports one, so I don't really oh, yeah, play that one. Right. I don't mind some yeah. of them. And then we've got an 18 wheeler as well. Yeah. Have we missed that one out? What's this one here? Yeah. Oh, it's, this is, um, is that Initial D? <laughs> No, it's, Sega Rally. It's, it's the remains of a Sega Rally. Um, some guy just turned up on the door one day and said, I've split up with the other half. I need to get rid of this fast. Do you want to buy it? Yeah. And it was, it's an absolute rate. Look at it. It's rusted out. It's covered in cigarette burns. It is absolutely it's horrible. Many it is times. many, many <laughs> round the track. Yeah. But he only wanted a couple hundred pounds for it and it, and it worked. It, it, needed, it needed a lot of servicing to get it usable. But look at um, all the fags that have been on it, all the fags that yeah. have been burning the top here. Look. <laughs> this, this one's definitely had a hard life. It has, so. but it's cool though, isn't it? It's super cool. It's got history. The amount yeah. of people have sat in there and had joy out of that game. Yeah, over yeah. The years. So, uh, and had a fag on the go while they were playing. <laughs> We've got air hockey. Always a fan favourite. Yeah. So. More Naomi cabs here. Virtual tennis. <coughs> You've got a load at the back here, a load of cabs around the back. Yeah, some, some projects, some projects. long workers and some breakdowns. You've got an Operation Wolf hiding around there. Ninja Assault. Where have I seen that game before? So, I'm sure maybe on a PlayStation. Yeah, or it was on like PlayStation that. 2, I think. Was it? Yeah. yeah. Wow, it's an amazing, amazing space, mate. Have we been down here? Not this oh, not, not yet. Dead 4. That's quite a recent one, isn't it? Yes, yeah, that's probably one of the newest ones in here. Yeah, so. Crisis Zone, Time Crisis 2, Aliens Extermination, that's quite a good game actually, I don't mind that. Yes. But that's popular, isn't it? That's, uh, until Time Crisis 2 came in, that was the most popular shooter yeah. in here. Yeah. Um, again, this is another one that was on my kind of my, my wanted list, because I actually was on about sort of 10 years ago, whenever it was, I actually went to Western Supermare Pier, played this for the first time the night it burnt down. Oh, so boy. it's like, oh, it's a brilliant game. We'll go back and play it. And then the next morning, Western Pier is gone. It's not there. It's, so when so, did the pier go then? Is that they've rebuilt it. Oh, they've um, rebuilt yeah, so it. The, the frame was quite solid. Okay. So, But the, most of the inside was all wooden right, floors, okay. wooden building. Okay. Because well, I was there about three weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. Like my first time in Western Supermare. And I have to admit, it did look like it was a bit run down, to be honest with you. Well, the town or the pier? <laughs> yeah. But was it, a, it was the seaside yeah. town to go to? It was inside? around here. It was the place to go. Was yeah. It? yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Shame, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So it, it had a much more old-fashioned charm back in the day. Yeah. Um, now it's very, very modern with like you know go kart race tracks and all, all the redemption machines. But yeah. back then, yeah, even though it was mostly fruit machines, they did still have quite a lot of games on there. Yeah. And uh, it was definitely the place, the place yeah. to go. Yeah, I can imagine you still pick up a few camps from that area, don't you? They still yeah, pop up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A few of these came from that area. Yeah. So, and we've got gun blades, aliens free the gun, and ninja baseball. Batman. Wow, what a fantastic place, mate. It really is. Thank you very much. And you're, you're thinking of moving it upstairs now, aren't you? We're, yeah, we're just we're, uh, starting to renovate upstairs. It's actually bigger up there than it is down here because it goes all the way to the road over the neighbouring shops. Right, okay. And um, it's about another 5,000 square feet up there. Wow. So it's going to be half consoles. We're going to get a load more sort of small jammer cabs up there. Um, and later on in the year, we're hoping to renovate the kitchen area. We'll get pizza ovens up there and have a little cafe, lots of tabletops. That's um, awesome. Yeah, make it an all-in-one arcade experience. It's brilliant, man. Right, I want to sit down and have a drink. We'll have a little chat. Yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. Absolutely. Thanks for showing us around, Thank mate. you very much. So we are going upstairs to the future. The future.
gaming. Uh, yeah, level two. Level so. two. <laughs> level two gaming. The next boss. Got your work cut out here, Stu. Oh, you haven't seen it. You haven't seen half of it yet. It's going to be amazing. So this is the side that's almost ready. So. Oh wow! Man, this is going to be brilliant, guys. Look at the space that yeah. you're going to have. So it is bigger than, than downstairs. So, uh. I hope the floorboards are okay. Yeah, Enjoy yeah. It's well. It used to be um, a snooker club, and it had full-size snooker wow. tables up and here. So heavy, yeah. So I mean, the the joists under it are huge, and they're really close together. Yeah. So, um, my understanding from the old landlord is it was a purpose wow. built. So. so, this is going to be the arcade in the West to go and visit. Hopefully so. And when do you hope it will be open? Well, top half? This first area is going to be mainly consoles, so it's going to actually be about two, three weeks. Um, we're going to hopefully open it ready for the, the half term holidays. Um, but it's going to be ma mainly consoles and TVs. Um, the rest of it, well, we're just waiting for the landlord. The new landlord has just taken over the building to f fix the roof and replace all the windows. And right. then we'll start working on the rest of the building, which we're hoping to get ready for Halloween. So, so awesome. we want to do a big Halloween sort of launch party up I'm going to come, definitely. Yeah. Excellent. I'm not, that, I'm not that far away, not to be huge, honest with Not a huge distance. We've got a few classics here, mate. Yeah, these are all... Defender. Waiting for last minute restorations. This is one of the, the machines that's on loan to us. Is it? Um, and again, it breaks down more than it works, but... Oh, it uh, does. Well, you could put a J-Rock in it. I, I, I have been tempted, but whatever I do has to be sympathetic because, again, it's not ours. I can't massively change right, it. So okay. I'd have to leave everything original inside and maybe put some stuff well, on it. You can get outside. an ad adapter loom. Yeah. So you yeah. can still put the original in there yeah. if you want yeah. to. I've got two sets of boards, but they just keep blowing. I know. So, um, Mine's been, yeah. my, my boards have not been too bad, actually. Um, but what a fantastic game. You need that on the floor. Yeah, yeah we definitely need that. I'm yeah. running ASAP. So. Chase HQ, another classic. Got a few old sofas here, mate. Yeah, I mean, the there's going to be area. about 20 25 consoles up here. Yeah, it's a couple weeks. I um, thankfully have a reasonable collection, being a bit of a retro hoarder of uh, console stuff as well as arcade stuff. This is another streets cab, it's very similar to your Gallagher downstairs, right? In fact, I'm sure there's one on eBay at the moment. I have seen one, yeah, yeah, yeah it was up for about 900 pounds or something, yeah. I think. Yeah, something crazy. I like them. This one's just been given to me as a shell with a, a 60 in one Pac-Man yeah. in it, but um, we just get it running, so, it, yeah. so at least it's, it's going. Zachariah. Track and field. Oh, is it? The, um, the oh. board's playing up, so we need to replace that. Oh, I do or repair like that. that. It's so cool. I like a track and field, actually. Got a couple of little old cocktails here, look. Yeah, lots of works in progress. We hide, we yeah. hide a lot of the stuff up here. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> it's cool that you've got the space, so. though. Yeah, yeah. Astro Fighter. Got a pool table. This is going to be awesome. It's going to be like a private club up here, man. Well, the idea is, downstairs, we actually get a lot of visitors from out of town. Um, we get regulars yeah. from sort of Cardiff, Exeter, Southampton. You know, people come, you know, 100 miles say, plus to visit yeah. us. And we've got regulars that come monthly from that kind of distance. Yeah. Um, but with so many arcades up, opening in the country now, we wanted something that's kind of more for the locals. So this bit upstairs is going to be more of a kind of a local gaming environment where they can just come in of an evening, lounge around, yeah. you know, have something to eat and drink while they're here. That's what you want. And um, yeah. obviously, you know, they'll be good for the out of towners too. Yeah. But yeah. You've got to have a console set up as well. Oh, it's definitely. all part of it. I mean, I've made my arcade sort of half arcade and half dedicated to console stuff because we all br yeah. were brought up with the Spectrum and yeah, the, yeah, that's why I started. all the consoles, yeah. weren't we, Spectrum as is, well? is my beginnings, the Spectrum. Yeah. And, uh, oh, it's going to be great, great, mate. Really cool. Well, thanks for showing us that. No problem at all. Right, so, Stuart, thank hi, you yes. so much for letting me have a little wander around hey, here. Very it's welcome, thank you. awesome. Thank you've you. been here for eight years. Eight years now, yes. Yeah, yeah and you're going to move upstairs, you're going to make a, a consult area. Yeah. Sort of a little mini club area, really. Pretty much, yeah. It's going to be, we're looking to open starting in week, weekday evenings as well as weekends yeah. when I'm says it's finished. So. I can see you've got a few old classic arcade yeah. games. Will they be up there as well? They will be, yeah. Once they're yeah. up and running, they'll be up there, yes. Oh, that would be awesome. You open Friday and Saturday night? Uh, Friday night and then yeah. Saturday daytime and Sunday daytime. S Saturday daytime. When you move up there, do you reckon you'll be open more? We'll start extending our hours, oh, yeah, definitely. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's funny seeing this. you obviously got a lot of passion for the video yeah. games. Where did you go back in the day? Where did you start out? Um, I, when I was a kid, I used to live in a village, so I didn't get to go to arcades very often. Yeah. They were just something I'd see on day trips or if I went on holiday. So yeah. it wasn't until I was in my sort of, sort of early, sort of mid-teens, that'd be like the late 80s, 
I was old enough to sort of get on the bus and go somewhere myself. So I used to go to sort of Burnham on Sea and Western Supermare were my main haunts. Right, okay. Which I'd probably go to maybe once every month or two. And what was your yeah. favourite game? Back in the day, I used to like Spatter House. Um, that was one of my favourites at the time. I used to like playing Gallagher. I used to like playing like, the old classics like Space Invaders just because they were quite easy to use and play. Yeah. That was um, the one that drew me into the, yeah. that's the game that got me into the hobby of Spain and Vegas. It's yeah. such an incredible game. But I would try almost anything once. I didn't really like the sports style stuff, but anything that yeah. was shooty, action y, sword fighty, I'd, yeah. I'd pretty much try anything. Yeah, and then when, when you went home, did you have a console at home? You could sort of live out those arcade yeah. memories? Early 80s, I got my first uh, Spectrum 48 Plus okay. for Christmas, so, and yeah. that's where it really all started for me. Yeah, so, yeah. good days. Fun very days. good days, yeah. Well, you've, you've amassed a fantastic collection. Thank you. Um, I'd love to come down here and help at some point. I'm sure yeah, you'd let yeah. me know. Yeah, definitely, work, definitely. Work yeah, yeah awesome. there's a lot Guys, to do. You have to come and see Stuart at the Bridgewater Time Warp Arcade. Absolutely amazing place. Stuart, thank you so much. You're very welcome. That. Thank you. I really appreciate it. No, I appreciate it. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Well, that was his arcade, but it's not finished yet, guys. We're going to have a look, quick look around at his shop, Insane Games in Bridgewater. Check this out. Right, this is Stuart's shop in Bridgewater. Insane Gaming. This is it, guys. It looks really, really cool. Look at this. Loads of cool toys. Where'd you pick half these toys up? Are the car boots, Stuart? Yeah, most of them people bring them in to trade or sell. Oh, trading, yeah. yeah. We do with the trading models. Yeah. So. Mugs. Obviously, we have suppliers where we want new stuff as well. Clocks. Posters. You got it all. Switch games. Let's see what Switch games you got. I think I have to get that while I'm here. <laughs> I've been after this for ages. Is that. That looks like. The old PlayStation game. Was that a new version? Got some cool stuff in here, man. PS4, loads of PS3, PSP. It's quite collectible at the moment, PSP. Yeah, yeah. Xbox 360, Xbox One. You got all the new stuff. You came for everyone in this, Stuart. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Amiibo. Some toys here. PS1. PS2. Loads of Wii. Wii U. DS. You got it all. Game Boy Color. GameCube. I'm going to have a good old rummage through this in a minute, Stuart. You know I am. Yeah, please do. <laughs> <laughs> Even cool. Amiga and Spectrum. Even Amiga and Spectrum. Don't see you don't see PCs, Spectrum so. games anywhere in a shop, do you? Uh, and every cassette has been tested. Really? Yeah, By I take, you? I take everyone home and I test them all. God, I had that. I had that. I don't think I ever did it. I just remember that cover. So cool. Mate, I love it when you see Spectrum games in a shop. Loads of DVDs. Mate, this is brilliant. Thank you. We're doing this now for 26 years. 26 years? Yeah. What, you've had this shop for 26 years? This one here, we've moved this one around, but our first shop in Wells opened yeah. in uh, February 1996. Why? So yeah, we've been doing those shops for 26 years now. You've got three shops? Three shops, yeah. Yeah. And they're all similar sort of layout, are they're they? All, they're all quite different, actually. Are they? Um, our street shop is kind of nice and wide, very well knit. This was an experiment with LED lighting. It didn't work, it's too dark. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got a shop in Wells, which is our very first shop. It's really small, but because it's so small, everything is floor to ceiling. It's really, really packed in. A lot of retro? So, quite a bit of retro, maybe. Yeah, but how far is Wells from here, then? Wells is about 20 miles from Bridgewater. So. Oh, OK. Is it on the way back to Swindon, or is it the other way? Yeah, is it more west? Yeah, it's a little bit... Off on is it? I think really, I might yeah. could pop in there on the way back yeah. home. <laughs> We've got a couple of little CRTs down there. We've got some books, magazines, and we've got some Super Nintendo guys. Look at this. Bit of Sonic going on up there. Lovely. DS. <laughs> that's, that's okay. Try not to get on camera. There's no escaping me. <laughs> it's awesome, mate. I love it. Love it. You got Warhammer as well. Yeah, they all go together, don't they? Yeah. And some lovely Dungeons and Dragons dice. 
brilliant. Fantastic. Well, guys, if you're ever in Bridgewater, come see the insane... Insane Games. Insane Games. You've got a website as well? Um, or Facebook. We have got Facebook, on yeah. And check out your arcade. Be Time Warp Arcade. Thank you very much. Well, what a day it's been. What a fantastic day. I thoroughly enjoyed myself. What a place Time Warp Arcade is. Guys, if you're in the area, you must go down. It's in Bridgewater. It's open Friday, Saturday, and I think Sunday as well. Um, I think this would be an awesome event for a UK VAC meet. Somewhere different, somewhere where we haven't been before. So hopefully, maybe this year, we might arrange a UK VAC meet at the Time Warp Arcade. Stuart's a top bloke. I love his selection of games because it's a real mishmash of arcade games that we used to have back in the day. It really did feel like an old English arcade all those street cabs, all those jammer cabs. It's just exactly how I remembered it. You did a fantastic job there, Stuart. And thank you so much for inviting me down and doing this tour. I really appreciate it. And I hope through this video, you get more business because you need it. And we want arcades like yours to stay open. And I've got to say a huge thank you to Stuart as well. Because while I was in his shop, I picked up Hotline Miami collection for the Switch. And he kindly gave this to me for doing the tour for him. So, Stuart, I really appreciate it. I've been after this game for ages. Thank you so much. Guys, go and check him out. Awesome guy. That's the Bridgewater Time Warp Arcade. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.